Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT, Red Pill Tamales. We have a very special guest on today. We covered a lot, man. We have Anthony Cabasa. I'm saying his name right? That's right, yeah. And uh, AKA Informed with Anthony. Very informative, like his name, Informed with Anthony. Yeah. Um, I mean, we cover everything from the truckers convoy, a little bit about a show that Univision was trying to put together between like, what is it? Linea de Fuego. They, yeah. They try to get both sides, the conservative side, but yet they ended up like canceling the Colombian conservative guy. Uh, a lot, a lot of talk about what's going on in Yuma, Arizona, the border. Oh my God. Uh, the state of California, the hypocrisy of Pinche Gavin Newsom. Dude, this guy's got so much information. I mean, he's boots on the ground. He, he's always um, gets the inside scoop because he's there. Like, it's like, damn, dude, are you ever home? Yeah. So amazing. Buckle up. Get a notebook. Get some notepads. For sure. You know uh, where can people find you, Chingo? You're going to be on the road pretty soon. You're, already, you're in Florida by the time that people are listening to this. So uh, where are you heading after that? You know what I'm saying? Well, you know. It's Anthony's picture right here. Yes, sir. Legalized Freedom Tour. Y'all know we had a name at that. Uh, Legalized Freedom Tour, West Palm Beach, April 3rd, Tacoma, Washington, April 7th, Nashville, April 14th, Corpus Christi, May 5th through the 7th, Arlington, May 12th through the 15th, New Braunfels, May 20th, Abilene, May 21st, Lubbock, May 22nd, Bryan College Station, May 28th, two shows, San Angelo, June 3rd, Odessa, June 4th, Austin, June 9th, and of course, hit up the website. We're hitting 30 cities. We also have Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, beautiful Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison. And we're working on Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, and Houston. All that and more at Chingobling.com. Get your tickets now. Join the newsletter. It's free. Stay in the loop. If you're into this type of discussion, it's interesting, man, when, you know, just getting off the phone with Anthony, like... I feel that pretty soon the left is really like the white liberals, whoever, the Democratic Party, they're really going to start panicking and they're going to be like, hey, man, they're not listening to Jorge Ramos as much. Like they're starting to tune in to Red Pill Tamales and, and Inform with Anthony and all these other people that are putting in work trying to show folks that, hey, man, don't fall for the rhetoric. Don't fall for the propaganda. We just want truth. We just want to make America a first world country again. Because right under, uh, right underneath our eyes, underneath our noses, they're transforming everything. If you guys haven't already, also go subscribe to the YouTube channel, CBTV. Chingo Chats has its own individual feed. Leave a uh, review somewhere on iTunes. Star it on Spotify. And if you're a part of the newsletter, you can actually reply back to new letters when they go out to you. Uh, like here's one real quick from a fan, Gabriel, out in Tacoma. Just bought my VIP tickets for the fam on April 7th. Uh, we've been looking forward to the show. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. You and the family all love. So look, send us an email if you uh, get one of the newsletters. Let us know that you're interacting. And of course, when you join the Patreon, you get access to the fire-ass Discord. Yeah, the Discord is super popping. Um, yeah, I know they're they're going to dig this episode with Anthony, man. Yeah. A lot of information. He is like a national treasure. Like he, to me, bro, he is the last bastion of hope in terms of actual journalism. Yeah. If we just had a couple more Anthony's <laughs> and a lot less CNN and a lot less propaganda, our, our citizens and our country would be way better informed. And we'd actually be looking at things like we don't want war. We don't want high gas price. What's up with inflation? We'd know who the fuck is at fault. <laughs> we know who did that. 100%. We're also going to read some of the best uh, reviews. That's why I'm mentioning it again. So here's one, one of the most recent ones. is awesome podcast. This podcast is political and relatable to the Latino community, especially Mexican-Americans. It's great for us Latinos that have been told to just follow the Democratic bandwagon and not question anything. Very relatable and helpful for us non-political folks that need to be awakened. Thank you guys rocking it. And uh, yeah, so we'll read some of the best comments, make sure they're funny and uh, they're five stars. Otherwise, we're going to not read. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, that's great. Uh, that's great. Um, I, I love I love reading those comments and especially how that person said, like, you know, they break it down for folks like us that may not be up on game with how they trying to trick us. Yeah, because every day, all day, people trying to persuade you and trick you. And we talk about that. We talk a little bit about that law in Florida and, and yep. everything else that's going on. So it's a long one. Get ready. So without further ado. We have Anthony Cabasa today on RPT. Sass. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special episode of Red Pill Tamales. We have a very important guest on the line. We have Anthony Cabasa from Informed with Anthony and El American. Yo, where are you right now, brother? 
Uh, I am finally back at home in Los Angeles, California, bro. After traveling the country for over <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> you were with the, uh, the the trucker convoys, correct? That is correct. I was uh, following the convoy that left in February 23rd from Adelanto, California, and a protest across the nation against the continuing mandate uh, at the Biden administration, and of course, employers are continue to have across the country, and uh, we ended up with them near Washington, D.C. around March 5th. So we were there for about two weeks. So I saw a clip on HBO Max from, um, what's his name, John Oliver? I think so, yes. Uh, last week, what, what is the Weekly name of the update? show? No, it? no, it's like Last Week Tonight or oh. something like that. Um, so are you familiar with that guy in that show? I am, yes. So he did a clip, I don't know if y'all saw it, he did a clip where he was trying to uh, educate and entertain the normies about the trucker convoys but dude it was so it was so one-sided and disrespectful um like the, he was just pulling out clips of like oh here's one guy that's down with the truckers and here's something he said on facebook five years ago like it's just something random that was kind of like whoa that sounded a little racist yeah you know just to try to paint <laughs> just to paint a narrative uh and then also right. I, th I think he criticized um uh the lady who has a band uh what's her name lich or Tara. Oh yeah, I don't remember her name. Though. Well, he was trying to clown like here's a and she has a band, and he like tried to play like the worst part of a song or something. Yeah, but um, right. I mean, as we all know, their demands are very clear. Could could you kind of like um, kind of put that into words, like what their what their demands are? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, it was multiple convoys uh, that were kind of happening, and from what I understand, they're still trying to continue to get multiple convoys to kind of protests outside of state capitals uh, for those that don't know uh, not every state in the united states is florida they, uh, you know uh, there's still a lot of states that are hostage uh, to its uh, government uh, california being one of them actually uh, where actually today is the first day that our children are allowed to not have masks and this was uh, a response to obviously at like the super bowl uh, you know where you guys saw so many people masked <laughs> uh, or unmasked rather you know they, they said that um, it was going to be a requirement to be masked and every single seat, because I talked to people that were at the Super Bowl, every single seat did have a K95 uh, mask uh, to wear. But obviously, you guys saw the images, you guys saw the videos, even local celebrities that were one, once bashing, you know, uh, uh, you know, the peasants of America for not wearing a mask. All these celebrities, you know, virtue signaling uh, were also not wearing a mask. And so then you had Gavin Newsom basically come out and say the reason why uh, kids need to continue to be masked is because they have low vaccination rates. Uh, but of course, the vaccination have only come out for kids just recently. It wasn't as recent as adults and the more susceptible. Uh, but anyways, going back to the convoys, there's multiple convoys still going on. <clears throat> and the one that we followed was called the People's Convoy. It was the most organized. They raised the most money. Uh, they hired an attorney. They have attorneys representing them as well just to make sure everything is being done correctly, safely calling uh, ahead at, at where they're going to be staying at overnight because it was 11 days. So obviously a convoy of that size, which ended up being basically thousands and thousands of vehicles long, uh, they needed a place to stay at night, especially to a place to fit all the trucks. And so they were pulling permits. They were calling ahead to local law enforcement. They were transparent. Everything was posted on their website. So obviously, you know, you're going to have like the John Olivers of the world trying to paint it as like, oh, look, these guys are terrorists. I'm like, well, terrorists don't coordinate with local law enforcement to make sure that traffic is good, to make sure that, you know, uh, there's a strong security. Uh, you know, terrorists don't hire private security to check people's trucks because that is what they were doing. Uh, they hired their own private security to, to any trucker that wanted to join in had to have their truck fully inspected to make sure they weren't, you know, troublemakers. Uh, someone crazy troublemakers infiltrating the convoy, uh, which it ended up happening anyway toward the end uh, near D.C. where uh, uh, there was a couple people that did infiltrate, but they were immediately kicked out uh, and identified. And they were told if they came back that their information would be given to law local law enforcement. So that was that was good on them. Can, you, can you say what they were trying to do, Anthony? Um, well, I don't know what all of them were trying to do, but I know that the first day that they had problems with some of the infiltrators was when they started what, what they started doing on the first day um, when they got near DC. So there was kind of like this uh, uh, misperception that they were going to go into DC, the nation's capital, and occupy it the same way uh, th that happened in Canada. 
obviously, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where they occupied uh, Canada's capital in Ottawa, and they stayed there, they basically occupied it. This convoy said, we're not, we're not going into DC. And the reason why not, we're not going into DC is because of all the funny business that happened last year, uh, during, you know, January 6th, where you had a lot of feds embedded, you had a lot of people that, uh, you know, were inciting violence that were opening up doors for people, and those people were never held accountable. Why not? You know, and um, so <clears throat> the first day that what they ended up doing was they said, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the D.C. Beltway. So the D.C. Beltway is basically three states surrounding uh, D.C., and it, it's basically like a 60-mile-plus, um, it's the 495, basically, that surrounds all of D.C. And so they said, we're going we're gonna to do a couple laps around D.C. to kind of show them, like, hey, look, we are here. We're large in numbers, and we want to sit down with legislators to talk about basically like our list of concerns and demands that we are asking of these legislators, which is uh, going back to your original question, what, what is it that they wanted? They basically want the Biden administration to lift the state of emergency in regards to COVID-19 pandemic that basically authorizes the federal government um, to take measures that are not given to a president during a non-state of emergency, um, which would include kind of imposing mandates and guidelines Obviously, you have the airlines that are still, you know, uh, pushing uh, masks, even though scientists say that the airline, you know, you have recycled air basically like every every two minutes, you know, um, you got fresh air in there. So it's, it's kind of one of those places where you don't really have to worry about an outbreak. And there really hasn't been any or at least any that I can think of uh, during air travel, you know, and so um, what ended up happening that first day when they went around the DC Beltway is, some people that pretended to be part of the convoy uh, were basically trying to run off uh, the lead truckers uh, off the road. Um, and so, uh, you know, they were just kind of like taunting them. They were brake checking them. Uh, there were like rumors that um, we could never really verify this, but it was talked about that they believe that there were some people on overpasses throwing rocks at the convoy and um, just things like that, you know, that they, they pretended to basically be part of the convoy. And then when it came time to, actually get near DC, they were taunting them, they were break checking them, uh, things of that nature. Punk ass fakes. <laughs> Probably inform <laughs> informants, um, agitators. Uh, but for the most part, what I saw uh, when you know when I was keeping track of this uh cross country, you know, voyage is people gathering, like even people that aren't truckers like people gathering over the uh, overpasses to wave and hold signs and cheer them on i also heard that um people with like private land were volunteering like hey you guys can come post up here regroup uh so that you're not in danger of you know posting up at a public place where now you get in trouble and stuff right yeah where they find those loopholes so i guess to the uh, to the normies out there they get uh, they get hit with this propaganda. They're like, oh, these are extremists, right wing. They have ties to Kinsai again. And as we saw in Canada, you know, they were just, you know, disrupting the economy and, and all this type of stuff. But I feel like, you know, the Byron and the Brandon crew, they wouldn't mind going as far as Trudeau. You know what I mean? Like they're almost like setting the stage for anybody that's a political dissident, you know, debank you you know, deep platform you. I mean, we've already seen big tech and all these people are, are in cahoots. So what what would be the next step? Do, do you feel like, um, you know, how, how did they feel the results? You know, do you think that people took note? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I think that the, the purpose was, like you said, to kind of go across the country in like a peaceful protest kind of way. And, and what I saw was kind of a snowball effect where they left California with a, maybe like a little bit less than a thousand vehicles. But by the time they got to D.C., it was like over 10,000 vehicles. And, you, and you're right. There was a lot of support uh, locally. There was a lot of people that came out to overpasses. Uh, somebody that kept count of the overpasses said that we passed somewhere over like 700 overpasses. And, and just about every single overpass had literally at least one supporter. And there was actually somewhere there was only one person. And we're like, oh, man, that's like a lone ranger out there, man. You know, and so they would still get the honk from the truckers and, Kind of make their day, but uh, it was definitely peaceful. It was definitely one of those things where uh, you, you, you're also right in that there was uh, private citizens kind of taking it upon themselves to kind of help out the convoy however they could. Uh, several times we had even like local mayors 
of, of different cities that we pass that welcome the convoy just to kind of, hey, you can come through our city. We'll either give you like discounted gas or, or discounted resources. I think when we live, when we stopped in Kingman, Arizona, which was, I believe, technically the first stop uh, after the first day of traveling, um, like a local resident or, or a donor or someone, I don't know if it was the gas uh, station itself, gifted 25,000 gallons of fuel toward uh, the lead trucks that were uh, uh, taking pe uh, the people's convoy through. So uh, one of the things that you did touch on was this was a people's convoy. That's why they called it that. They didn't call it a trucker convoy because they kind of wanted to let basically anyone just join in and be like, hey, look, if you got a minivan, if you got a Prius, we don't care. Like if you just want to, to stand with us in solidarity and if you want to join this convoy, uh, you're more than welcome to. And, and then there was a couple states for sure. I know like when we hit up like New Mexico, and uh, Texas area, there was a lot of people that joined in um, just for that state. So like we would hit up New Mexico and then New Mexicans would come out and meet the convoy at the state line of Arizona, New Mexico. And then they would join us all the way from New Mexico uh, into the state line of New Mexico and Texas. And then um, they would ba basically go back home. So there were some people that joined for the day. There was a couple of people that joined for a couple of days and then they went back home. And there was even some families that I met, like literal families, like wife, husband, and then uh, the three kiddos that we interviewed, that they were standing at an overpass supporting uh, the convoy. And, and they just felt so, so overwhelmed and, and, you know, just kind of filled with like, man, like this is historic. This has never really happened before ever in the history, you know, of convoys where we have this, many, this much organization, this many truckers, this many vehicles. So they just grabbed their stuff and, and, and headed out with us and they just ended up staying with us like the entire time. And they're like, yeah, we joined back in Arizona. We had no intention of doing so, but we just saw how big it was and we just had to join in and, and, you know, uh, be, be part of history basically. But yeah, every, everywhere we stopped, there wasn't really a place that we had many problems uh, basically at all. I know that there was, I think on the third day or fourth day, we knew that as the, the convoy was going to be passing through the state of Illinois, and apparently, Illinois government had reached out to to the to the People's Convoy organizers, which was composed of 30 truckers, um, that said, "If you guys even think about coming into the state line of Illinois, you will be arrested." So they basically said, um, "You know, if you even just come through our state, we will make sure to arrest every single one of you." Um, I cannot confirm that because I I didn't personally hear it, but that's what the organizers were talking about. I don't have a reason to not believe them. And it was the only time that that really happened um, uh, where, where we had kind of problems with local government. But we ended up going through Illinois. The only thing that the organizers advise us is don't even stop. If you're part of the convoy, don't even stop for gas in Illinois because they just don't know what the government's going to do there. You know, um, but, they, they, you know, obviously they wanted to keep it peaceful because there were so many families that were there. And so, you know, especially as an organizer, leader, you want to make sure that everyone's, you know, taken care of and, and, you know, no, no funny business or anything like that. But uh, they did reach Hagerstown, Maryland, where they continue to, to basically stay there. Uh, it's like an open speedway, like in the, uh, that, that's there. And so they have the entire convoy there. I know they've been staying put due to, due to uh, snow that they've been hit with, but um, yeah, they're there and they're, they're they continue to, get people to join in and, and stop by and take a look at the convoy. It's amazing how, you know, these brave truckers and, and, and everybody that pitched in are really trying to put their foot down and, and stand up for everybody and demanding they're like, Hey man, we are past emergency powers. Like it's over. Right. You know what I mean? Like we're not at that point anymore. You have to undo that. And right. un unfortunately, you know, these people have been painted as like fringe, like uh, some of the propaganda out there is like, oh, 90 percent of truckers are already vaccinated. And, you know, this is a rule that, you know, uh, something about I don't know if it, it pertained to Canada or here, but it was just the propaganda of like this is very fringe. Most of them are vaccinated and it's a rule that only applied to them and da 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 da, da and, and what are their demands? And it's it's crazy how. The truckers went from being praised as like, you know, obviously being the backbone of our supply chain and distribution. And that's what allows you to have the ability to go to the store and get some milk or whatever. Right. And right. At, at as soon as they decided to band together, 
they switched their tune and they said, well, Hong Kong stands for how Hitler, <laughs> you know what uh, I mean? And yeah, and, mm-hmm. no, I was going to say, you're absolutely right, man. Uh, this is something that I talk to a lot of people about, uh, including like democratic family. I'm like, dude, isn't like a Democrat party, like a pro worker, you know, like, aren't they like pro worker, pro unionization, pro like striking, you know, uh, against like corporations and, and big government. This, this is something that I'm even like baffled with with our own raza, bro. You know, like this is something that like I'm like, bro, aren't you guys like always crying about like colonization and, and, and government and big pharma? And all of a sudden they like you're you're perfectly fine with them just literally shoving it down your throat. Like so, so the, the U.S. government has always been colonizing. But this one time they got it right on a vaccination. <laughs> like now now they're the good guys. I'm like, bro, what happened to you guys, man? Like at least show some consistency there. Where, like, if you're against the U.S. government, I mean, dude, like, how, how many of us grew up listening to, like, Immortal Technique talking about, like, you know, the fourth branch of the of the U.S. government, which is, like, the, the media lies, the MK Ultra experiments, all this stuff, you know, uh, against people of color and brown people. And this is not – now, all of a sudden, we're taking the side of big pharma and, and big government because because that's what the media tells us is good. Because, oh, if you're against it, you're like this anti-vaxxer, you're this, you're this white supremacist. Let me tell you something, man. Like, healthcare workers in California were fired in mass. I know more Latinos and Latinas that got fired because of this. LAPD officers that are about to be fired. Like, dude, LAPD is like 70% uh, around that, like, uh, Latinos and Latinas. You know, and I'm just like, bro, this affects us a lot, bro, a lot. Us as Latinos. And I'm just like, bro, you're going to be against your own people. You're... You're the one calling us like, oh, traitors to our race and traitors to, to, to the brown people and this and that. But you're okay with a white government. Like, you're, I'm, again, using your own words, right? Like, these colonizing government firing your people. Like, bro, my mom is an immigrant from Mexico. Like, she, she has very limited English. And she got let go. She was forced retired. My mother was forced retired after working at a hospital for 40 years because she refused to get vaccinated. And I'm like, bro, like, aren't you guys like pro immigrant? Like, there's a lot of immigrants that are also getting fired. But because the government is telling you something, because big pharma is telling you, a corporation is telling you something, now you're not pro worker? Now you're not, oh, now it's, oh, it's because the white supremacists, like, dude, it shows some consistency here. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's baffling. Yeah, a lot of folks on the left um, haven't realized that the Democrat Party has become the party of the elite. You know, the globalists, Hollywood, you know, big tech, the donor class, the big money corporate corporate type of people. Whereas like the America first MAGA fragment of the Republican Party has become populist, working class, everyday man, blue collar. That hasn't got to the Raza yet because you have this like rhetoric that works very well, which is just they trigger us with race. Um, We're supposed to get excited because Kamala has dark skin. You know what I mean? Uh, Joe Biden plays Despacito and we're supposed to be like, oh, and and all they do is use rhetoric like race, racism. Thankfully, we don't have the burden of the N word. Like we don't have that burden of like the minute they say it, it's like Pavlov's dog and it's like, ah, who, who are we canceling? Right. It's not like right. it, they can't they haven't used that one on us. Like, well, they said Trump said spick one time or hmm. something like that. Right. Like that doesn't it's be like what? But um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I blame and this is me speaking. This is not Anthony or Rob. I blame, you know, obviously Latino Hollywood. I, I rail on them every week. Uh, Food's gone wild. All these little pages out there that don't have the nuts or the courage or the brain. <laughs> it's like the motherfucking uh, was that Wizard of Oz. Yeah. One of them don't got the courage. One of them don't got the damn brain. But there's <laughs> they're still stuck. I don't know. Like they're stuck in the 90s. I don't know where they're stuck. But they keep perpetuating this rhetoric of like race, race, orale, sell out, coconut, you want to be white, que la chingada. Meanwhile, everybody's getting screwed at the gas pump. Uh, depending on where you live, you know, you have the government overreach out of the wazoo. And then we started this conversation talking about the hypocrisy of Gavin Newsom and the elites and celebrities at the Super Bowl. And all motherfuckers got to do is say, ¿Sabes qué, homie? I held my breath. And he la raza, but oh, but he held his breath. <laughs> I had the mask in my hand. You know? <laughs> no, but he held his breath full. What are you gonna do? It's Magic Johnson, dog. He held his breath. Hey, Anthony, what feedback I, do you get from the raza when you bring stuff up, like you know, be consistent, or how is it now that you're a part of this? You know, trust the government and do corporations. 
No, you know what's what's interesting? You were just talking about how like, oh, you know, if if, if Garcetti says, you know, like, oh, I held my breath. Well, hey, he held his breath, and it, it, it it's so sad, man. Like, I, even like um, Dolores Huerta, you know, which I look up to as a as a great, you know, civil rights leader, and it's even like sad to kind of see how she's kind of become part of like that cog machine because I remember when like Gavin Newsom was running for, you know, there was a special election here in California. She was out here like, oh, viva, viva Gavin Newsom. And I was just like, bro, like that ain't it. Like this guy doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about us. You know, like, again, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to like be out here like, oh, you know, like uh, uh, woke and, and, and use these terms. But I'm like, dude, th- these are your terms that you guys invented. Like these people don't care about you. And you're out here like, oh, viva Gavin Newsom. And everyone in the crowd's like, viva. You know, I'm like, bro, you're like saying hell Newsom. I'm like, like, what do you, <laughs> you know, like what, what happened to us, man? Like, what what happened to just banding together and looking out for our own? Now we're like selling out to Newsom, who's part of like this elitist family that a lot of people don't know that you know he's um, uh, Nancy Pelosi's nephew, you know, and so he's part of this big family that you know just owns parts of California basically to ensure that <clears throat> they continue to win over and over again. But no, yeah, um, t- talking with people, you, you have the more sensible ones. There there are sensible. Um, uh, the Democrats are like, okay, obviously this is wrong. Yes, this is bad. War with Russia is not okay. Gas prices suck. Like <laughs> something needs to change. But I think that the populist right and the populist left have a lot more in common. And I think that that's where they need to draw together and be like, dude, we need to elect these people out. All these neocons, all these neolibs, all these people, you know, like I, I, I'd say that with, with Donald Trump, we saw a, like a big rise in the populist right where there were anti-establishment, anti-corporatism, anti, um, you, you know, and, and, and it's one thing to say, but was Donald Trump all of those things? Sure, maybe not. But a lot of the, a lot of his supporters are, though. And I actually know a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters that ended up voting for Donald Trump in 2020 because he was a lot more anti-intervention, anti-foreign war. And, you know, uh, anti-establishment, anti-corporatism, anti-mainstream media. And these are all things that Bernie Sanders once claimed to be. And so that's why there needs to be that consistency. And I do see it in some people. I, like I said, I, I know a lot of people that voted for Bernie Sanders in 2016. They might have voted for Bernie Sanders in 2020, but obviously he didn't get the Democratic uh, no- nomination. Um, but, uh, Joe Biden did. And so they ended up voting for President Trump because they're like, look, this guy's anti-corporation. He's anti-mainstream uh, media. So that's that's what I like. And so <clears throat> I think that there's a lot of a lot of things that the populist left and the populist right do have in common. I know that, like, especially now with the pandemic, a lot more populist right are like anti-corporation where we're looking at uh, maybe corporations that made billions and billions of dollars. And we're like, man, school these fools, <laughs> you know, um, like, like it, it should be more like working class, more middle class supporting truckers that just want to make a living, you know, uh, that are representing uh, the working class. And so um, I, I think that, you know, moving forward, it, it'd be interesting to see, man, uh, 2022 uh, midterms, I think is going to show a massive swing in another direction I already see the, the corporate media already working up their headlines, saying that more and more Hispanics are embracing white nationalism and white supremacy. Did you I'm see like, those headlines? Bro. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah was it Axi- dude. Axios or something. Yeah. That was one of them. Yeah. Axios. Yeah, I, I actually read that article, and they basically pointed to like five people. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh look, Hispanics are embracing it. I'm like, bro, you you pointed to five people that don't represent basically anyone. Like we. We as conservatives, we as pop, we never point to those people as like our leaders. You know what I mean? And it's like, um, it's like Hispanics that don't even speak Spanish. It's just like, you know, they just happen to be mixed. And they're like, oh look, because of these guys, we're now going to label any conservative, uh, and and t- try to tie them to them. And I'm just like, dude, it, it's not going to work. Like we 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 have other outlets. We have your like your podcast. We have like El American. We have other things like, bro, they're building this narrative because this is how they get you. You can't fall for it. Yeah, rhetoric, more rhetoric to trigger people because the the last few minutes of you speaking, when you're talking about populism and how Trump was anti, you know, new wars and anti mainstream media, anti uh, uh, corporatism and stuff like that, it's like you're speaking Mandarin to the average Latino because they're probably like, "No, Trumpas is racist, fool. What are you What are you talking about, fool? He's Hitler." <laughs> and and then these Axios people notice they didn't mention. Like Jesse Olguin, yourself, us, like, you know, people that are um, 
maybe a little bit more of an accurate representation of who might be helping to uh, usher in some of these ideas. All of the RGV. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they uh, Jesse Olguin uh, from Lexit Movement posted a video where he was talking about that. And he mentioned uh, Nick, Nate, what's his name? Nick Fuentes. Fuentes? Yeah, I'm, I'm not too, point to yeah, I'm not too familiar with the guy. He's, he, I think I've heard his name. It's like kind of controversial, but these, those are the people that they decided to try to like. How do we take a few data points and paint a whole narrative? Because that is the only way they could beat us is to cheat us. Everything they do is based on right. lies, rhetoric, and emotion to just trigger you. And they, you know, race, racism, orale, and and let's not skip over this uh Dolores Huerta who obviously is a historic figure in Chicano culture and American history and all this stuff. However, mm -hmm. if you're a democrat operative, you're a democrat operative. You know what I mean? Like the minute right like wait till midterms roll around. I can't wait to see Evelyn Longoria and George Lopez pull their pom-poms back out. <laughs> can't wait. And they're just getting their pom-poms put on your cheerleader skirt and get ready. Orale, Gavin Newsom and they're going to vote blue till the end of time they're going to tell everyone to vote blue and i cannot wait for rasa to wake up and snap out of it and be like hey last time we listened to you and despacito uh we got fucked at the gas pump inflation is high <laughs> inflation is out the wazoo and now they're just trying to blame it on trump covid and putin Right. Anthony, do you see the narratives breaking among uh people that look like us and sound like us or is it still more of the same where they're just going along with it Man, that, that's a tough one, man. I think that the only real way we'll be able to kind of gauge that is, is when, you know, when the Raza starts voting, you know, and, and how they're voting. I, I will say that in talking with people, they see the problem. It's just they're not able to connect the dots just yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know that inflation is bad. They, they, they realize that. Like, oh, man, this was worse than it was two years ago. And they see the gas prices. They see the corruption. They see the school boards teaching little kids you know, things that shouldn't be taught, all that stuff. They see it. They're just not tying it in to politics because when they think of a school board, they don't think Democrat, Republican. There's a lot of people that don't know, like, that school boards are elected or, or you know, that, that they're Democrat or Republican. There's a lot of people that don't know that judges get elected. I can't tell you how many times, like, one of the, mo one of the questions that I get asked the most uh, during, like, election time, especially midterms, is, like, why can't I vote for president now? And I'm like, bro, that's every other four years. Like, it's not every two years. And they're like, well, why is it asking me what judge I should vote for? I didn't even know you can vote for a judge. And I'm like, okay, so we're at the poll. We got them there, but they're still not informed, bro. You know, like they still don't, under, they don't correlate the, the, the judge. They don't correlate the system. They don't correlate like the school board. They don't understand that yet. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's, it's really hard to kind of really get like, I would say, on a general level, like just generalizing, I can tell you most Latinos are, are conservative. I can tell you like, yes, they want conservative policies. They want America first policies. They don't want foreign wars. You go up to like a lot of Latinos and you ask them about Putin and Russia, they either, or, or uh, Russia and Ukraine, they either don't really know what's going on, only like few talking points that they've heard on the news, or they don't care for it at all because they're busy working because a lot of us work, right? Mm -hmm. Or they just not, they're just like, bro, I just don't care for it, you know, but I also don't want war. So if you ask them like, Hey, what do you think about what's happening in Russia and Ukraine? They're like, well, I'm not really that involved. But then you ask them, do you think we should go to war? They'll be like, Oh no, absolutely not. So even if they don't know what's really like all going on on a basic human level, like it's, it's like, Hey, I, I know I might not know what all is going on, but I know what it would mean for this country going into war with Russia and then all the power players out there in Europe. So I, I want to say it'd be nice. I, it is kind of nice when you go to like, uh, you know, hood clips or Fools Gone Wild and you see like a video and then you go to the comments and it's kind of like, oh, that's refreshing, dude. You know, because maybe two, three years ago, they'd be like, oh, F this dude, F Trump, Trump's racist. And now they're like, nah, this is kind of stupid. You know, like, what, what? <laughs> wait a minute. Like, this would have never happened under Trump, you know? And I'm just like, whoa, like, you never used to see that before. And even like with Kyrie Irving, you know, uh, Kyrie Irving being able to sit inside of a basketball game of his team playing, but he's not allowed to play. I, I saw that post. I don't know who posted it. It was like Hood. I don't know if it was Hood Clips or, or one of these like prominent, like, uh, you know, African-American uh, Instagram pages that they have. 
it's a it's a big one and and they put Kyrie Irving uh sitting inside of the stadium uh where his team is playing but they cannot but he cannot uh you know play mm-hmm. and all the comments are like make this make sense i mean you you even had like other like uh, like sports players like Lisa Dude, Leslie was on there like Kevin like, Durant oh, LeBron, I think. Kevin Durant himself is his teammate he called it out like this is just people that are just uh you know using authority and power to just trip did not LeBron too I didn't see exactly LeBron. LeBron. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, it, I, and yeah, LeBron, even a while back when he tested positive, uh, and then it came back and it's, like, oh, actually, it's negative. And then he's like, yo, some, something's going on here, you know, and he was like starting to question the narrative. So, I would say like the Matrix, like, you know, is, 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 is it, it's, it's happening right now. We're watching it. We're watching people taking that red pill. We're, we're watching people question it. But unfortunately, it's like their ego. It's like that, uh, there's like a viral photo that's kind of going around where, it has like a woman and she's wearing like a mask and on her mask it says, I'm just not ready to take this off and yeah. admit that I was wrong and lied to, yeah. you know? So they'd rather, they'd rather just continue doing what the false narrative was, which was socially distant. Don't go outside. Don't go to the gym, you know, like wipe down everything. Like you guys remember those videos mm-hmm. of like people bringing their groceries and they're like yep. spraying them outside. I'm just like, bro, this is insane, you know, but and there's people still doing that, man. There's people like, like, oh, I went inside a store today and nobody was wearing their mask. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I can't believe this. And blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, bro, because it's over, man. Like, just get over it. <laughs> it's well, done. I-, I saw that meme, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's inaccurate because the meme says, the, the, what, the, what it says on the mask, right? It says, uh, I'm not ready to, let, to admit that everything I was told is a lie, right? I'm paraphrasing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I feel that a lot of people who still rock the mask everywhere religiously and they're still living in this fear, this perpetual state of fear, I feel like maybe their information sources suck. They don't follow Inform with Anthony. You know what I'm saying? They don't follow <laughs> L American. They don't follow us. So to them, this is news. Like, like I don't in other words, the meme is making it seem like I know everyone's telling me that this is a lie, but I'm not ready to accept it. I feel like 90% of the people that are still wearing triple mask with the Beto O'Rourke sticker on their car and the coexist sticker and, and all that shit. I feel like they haven't gotten the memo. You're actually right. They're so, in a news bubble. Um, Bill Maher was on Ben Shapiro's uh, like Sunday special on the daily wire. And he said, left wing media has blood on their hands. He's like, why are your <laughs> listeners and your viewers so misinformed about, you know, name it percentages of COVID deaths and so on and so forth. And Everything. He absolutely nailed it. And, and um, I wanted to say this too. Um, uh, um, I fucking forgot. Go ahead, dog. Well, now I was just talking about you know the left-wing <clears throat> narrative and blood on their hands and the people that are wearing that mask. Which go ahead. I, I remember now because I was trying to hold a mental note. I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> go Anthony. ahead. Go ahead. When, back when we were talking about fools going wild in the comment section and and people starting to starting to connect the dots, I feel like the biggest red pill for the fools going wild, the higher the the taller the socks, the downer the fool people, is this. Mm-hmm. You're on the same side. As all the fucking pronouns and the purple hair and the fucking the trans closet in the school is like, come on, come change your clothes and have a new identity. Like all that um, spectrum, asexual, this and that and pansexual and gender fluid and the 56 genders. I don't know if the food's gone wild crowd understands that's the side you're on and you and your people are not a priority because they're trying to usher in. This stuff. They're more worried about other groups. But all the little cholos are like, hey, fool, a fucking Democrat por vida ese. And it's like, how many genders are there? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I don't no, know. I, I, that's how I would no, like I that's how that, I would like to ridicule the Fools Gone Wild people. I think that the thing with the Fools Gone Wild is that they, they, they have an image to maintain. And it's like they'll be damned before they get rid of it because they already have a pretty good size, you know, community built. So being critical thinkers right now, changing their position wouldn't behoove them because they're making sales on whatever it is that they sell, whether it be propaganda, whether it be lies, whether it be pronouns, whether it be, you know, merch on their, on their link in their bio, whatever it is, ad space, whatever. Cause that, that's one of the things that like, I, I've come to realize a lot about um, like corporate media, especially is, you know, people will say like, Oh man, like the corporate media hated Donald Trump. Like they really hated him. I'm like, bro, they love that guy. They can't wait for him to come back because it was views, it was mm. clicks, it was shares, yeah. it was comments. It was, you know, again, that perpetual like hate, like, oh, yeah, we hate him too over here. But no, we actually don't because never in my life will my articles be this read. Again, that's why you had so many like activists turned journalists 
because they would just hire them to say stupid stuff with stupid headlines, but people would share it over and over and over again because it gave them that false sense of like, wow, these people feel just like me and these guys are woke and these guys went to Harvard and they went to Pepperdine and they went to, you know, Yale. Wow, like they're just like me. But it's like, it's all like fake, man. You know, it's like, it's all fabricated. And so the same thing with like, you know, Fool's Gone Wild. I, I'll be honest, I don't think I follow them. Um, at least, you know, like I pay attention to like what they post every day. Um, I, I, again, but it's like, it, it, they did, they got that, they got that persona. They got that image that they must maintain. And it kind of like reminds me with like a recent, um, interview that they did with Snoop Dogg where, uh, I, I don't know what the podcast was or if it was like a radio station, but, uh, uh there was a woman that was kind of like asking them questions, like, you know, looking back now to like your nineties music where the way you kind of portrayed women, do you regret calling women like hoes and stuff like that? And he's like, hell no, nah. like F them hoes, you know, like F all of them. This is not, why, why would, why would, is he not willing to change? Even though he's pro Democrat, even though he's anti-Trump, why is he still like F hoes and F the post? Because that's his image. You're talking that's about Snoop? been his image. Yeah. Talking about Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And so like, because that's the image. So they'll be damned before they lose their audience because it's risky man it, it's risky you know once you're like a celebrity once you've got that base audience that follows you that they're your they're, you're your ride and die no matter what i mean mm -hmm. Chico, you probably you probably know this probably better than most people well, I, mean, I, you know, I got the biggest nuts in the game that's why yeah that's what I, that's what i'm saying it's it you probably know better because you did take that chance you're like bro i'm done with this i'm done with this false narrative i'm going to create my own platform and i'm going to speak it how it is and a lot of people had problems with that. And there's probably a lot of people that cut ties with you, people that don't call you anymore, people that yeah, venues. Uh, maybe when maybe when they po when you post something, this is another uh, good one. I, and I have celebrities tell me this all the time that when they post something, they get secret support. What does that mean? They won't like your tweet. They won't comment on your tweet. They won't share your tweet, they'll but they'll you. text you and be like, Hey man, like, thanks for saying that, bro. Uh, yeah. Like I could never do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, I, but I you like could you though. You're just not willing to rip. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, and, and to that point, um, uh, back when I was a lefty Larry, I had a, a special on Netflix or a, a comedy thing. It was called uh, They Can't Deport Us All and because uh, we couldn't think of a better title. And um, they, uh, I think I even got a write-up like in RollingStone.com. It was like tackling uh, humor in Trump era immigration policy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm getting all these write-ups because they found a way to tie it in with Trump. And then, Correct. and then the minute I came out the conservative closet, uh, they did a hit piece. It was a uh, Remescla, uh, an organization that I had worked with a few times, and uh, they're mm -hmm. followed. They're followed by uh, Barry uh, Obama. Coincidentally, uh, you know, there's no coincidences. <laughs> no coincidences. And um, no. and they did a hit piece. They're like, uh, uh, what's the what's the MMA guy? Bryce Mitchell? No, 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 no. Yeah, fuck Ortiz. Tito Ortiz. Tito Ortiz. They were like, oh, Tito Ortiz. yeah, they were like little pump. Tito Ortiz. Right. Chingo. Oh, Bang. that's right. Yeah, and it was like Latinos who spread disinformation. It was like, get off my dick. <laughs> You're the fucking spreader of misinformation. You fucking cucks. Fucking virus. I can't stand these motherfuckers, bro. That's why my blood pressure stays high. And uh, but hey, man. <laughs> We we support you a thousand percent. We love what you're doing. Everybody listening right now, do yourself a favor and make sure you're following Anthony on Inform with Anthony everywhere. Uh, your boots on the ground. Uh, we had Oscar at Blue on recently. Another gentleman who's always boots on the ground. Um, dude, you must have. I mean, the stuff you get to see, like you're immersed. You're literally. I mean, you were a part of the convoy. Like, I mean, you were on the border. You, you saw some Antifa shit going down. Like, when 2020 was burning in the mostly peaceful protests, the fucking color <laughs> revolution, it was a color revolution, what they were trying to do. Um, you witnessed yeah. all this firsthand. So you, you're a national treasure. Uh, we're off of all that all that Dol Dolores Huerta stuff, all the Democrat operatives, the George Lopez's. We're off of that. And the people want truth. They just don't know that they're conservative. They don't know that they're culturally conservative yet. They haven't been disabused of the rhetoric. Yeah, man. And I, and I think that, um, <clears throat> look, I tell people all the time, you know, people, people think that I do what I do because I want to help Republicans that I, that I, that I do what I do because, Oh, because, Oh, you just want us to vote Republican. 
one thing that I say to Latinos everywhere, Hispanics, our people is, look, bro, no party is deserving of your loyalty, that you should disown family, friends, colleagues, you know what I mean? Like, no party deserves that because both parties have been at fault for the downfall of America for quite some time. The only reason why I supported Donald Trump, and I didn't even vote for the guy in 2016, but I voted for him in 2020. The only reason is because he was an outsider, man. He shook things up. You might not like the way he did it, but he shook things up forever. Now we have this administration that basically tried to be Obama 2.0, and people are now seeing what is wrong with Obama 2.0. They're now seeing what it means to just go back to normal, where you have a non-transparent president just trying to do things abroad, for personal interest because his son is involved in Ukraine and they got backdoor dealings. Now people are starting to see the corruption everywhere. Now people are awake. You got more parents involved. And that's what it's about, man. It's like, dude, just, just here's the truth. You decide what you want to do. Don't, don't change your mind. Don't take a side just because of your political preferences. No political party. If anything, look, if you're a Democrat and you're unhappy with the Democratic Party, then take charge. Take charge, join the Democratic Party, become a leader, and change the party to what you think it should be. You want it to be more Bernie Sanders populist? Then take over and stop allowing these Nancy Pelosi's to run the to run the party. You want more AOCs? Look, I don't have to agree with all her policies myself. I don't have to agree that she she's the future of Latinos and this is that. But at least she's not like this establishment uh, uh, a person like Nancy Pelosi, the Adam Schiff's, the Jerry Nadler's of the world. At least she's trying to. Well, at least she pretends that she's trying to make a difference. But when it comes time to voting, she, she votes just like the establishment does, which is why I have a personal gripe against her, because she promises one thing and then she, she 180s herself when it comes time to voting. But I tell people, I'm like, look, man, it's not about voting one way or the other. It's about just get it done. Do better for your community. Get, get engaged. Get informed. Just know the truth. Stop believing all this crap. You know, five years ago, 10 years ago, you were anti-establishment, you were anti-government, you were anti-big pharma. And all of a sudden, because the media is telling you what side you should, we should pick, oh, it's because it's the Republicans that are opposing or that are, are in line. Oh, well, I'll be damned if I ever agree with a Republican. So therefore, I'm going to be pro-pharma. I'm going to be pro-mandate, pro-lockdown. I'm going to be pro-five mask if that's what it takes to, to show these Republicans. Get your booster, like, dude, fool. Yeah, you like got to be a booster. third booster, fourth booster, you know, and I'm like, bro, how, how long is it going to take before you realize that, bro, it's, it's your party doing the harm and you got to wake up to this, man. And it doesn't mean that you have to go out and vote Republican all the way down. That's not, but hold your party accountable. Mm -hmm. Hold your damn party accountable. Make it back to what it used to be, because th like I said from the beginning, populist right, populist left, we have a lot in common, man. a lot in common. Um, but it, we're only going to do things if. We stop with this, with this narrative of like you know one side versus the other side. It's literally just us against the establishment, man. That's all it comes down to. That's it. And, and before we let you go, um, let's touch on the Univision show, which is trying to have a conservative point of view and a uh, what liberal point of view. Yeah, can you expand on that, Anthony? Because I saw that you posted that one of the co-hosts or hosts got their uh, Twitter account banned, right? Yeah, so <clears throat> I have a, a friend. She actually works with us at an American. She she does like a podcast. And her name is Bianca. She's Puerto Rican. And she had told me a while back, like, hey, don't tell anyone. But uh, Univision reached out. They're, they're trying to make, like, a new show. And it's called Línea de Fuego, uh, which basically translates into, like, line of fire. And so what it's going to be, it's a discussion panel, like, a political, like, of current events, current politics, current trends, you know, uh, uh, pop culture, whatever. Um, and so what they're going to do, it's, it's the host of the show. And then you have two liberals and two conservatives. And so my friend Bianca, she's one of them. And then Frank Amargo, he's another one. And I had actually interviewed him about a year ago on a Spanish podcast because he's actually, he's kind of like a political refugee um, from his hometown. I believe it's Colombia. It has been a while um, since I, I, I look back because I've interviewed so many like refugees and, and political uh, refugees. Um, but I do believe he's from Colombia. Um, and he basically got kicked out of his university for being like pro-capitalism and his university had like images of like Che Guevara and, you know, Mar Marxist ideology and, and all these people. And he was kind of like, he would have like political debates with his colleagues and be like, Hey, like, why are we supporting these guys? Like these guys killed like lots of people and, 
and it's not right that we have these ideologies. And so he basically ended up getting kicked out of his university for having pro-capitalist, pro-America views in his home country of Colombia. Um, and so he ended up having to like come out to the U.S. to be accepted to a university out here to be able to finish what he wanted to do. And so he's basically out here because his story blew up nationally. And the media was after him, leftists were after him, and people was after him, like in his home country. And so he was just like, dude, we got to put in like America because it, this is not going to work out well. They found out where he lived, like the whole work. So, <clears throat> anyways, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just want to jump in. Isn't it funny that like you never hear people on the right, to my knowledge, like, sure, there's some wackos everywhere, right? No matter, no matter right. how, where, whatever, but like, you know, it's not commonplace that you hear these mass movements of people on the right trying to uh, dox, target, cancel, go after, show up at your door type shit. You know, it tends to be these like Marxist mass movement um, fucking cult like behavior. And, and that's crazy. But anyway, I had to throw that in there. So go, go on. No, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Um, and so. Uh, anyway, so he got invited to be a panelist, and so the the show just basically started. And uh, again, the the whole theme of it, and it's interesting because Univision's ratings has gone down at, after Donald Trump. The same thing with Telemundo, and so like I know for a fact, I've talked to people in Univision, I've talked to Telemundo, they're firing people left and right because they just don't have budget um, for these programs. And now it's interesting that this is not the first time that I hear that Univision is kind of like undertaking, like trying to take in conservatives to kind of show that other point of view. Hmm. That way they're, it's not that obvious that they're hmm. so left leaning. And so I, when she told me this, I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. And so uh, they've been doing the show, I think, for like a couple of weeks now. And, um, you know, it's gaining traction. More people are tuning in, especially because the segment is in Spanish. And so not even two, three weeks later, you got Frank that, you know, was basically on Twitter, you know, promoting the show, saying like, look, if you guys tune in, this is what you get to hear. And it was kind of like a segment of him kind of like owning the left. Um, because, look, man, I, I hate to say this, but um, I, I've tried to interview so many leftists before. And the thing is that none of them will ever debate. They, they, whenever it comes to debating like a leftist, there's so much emotion. There's so much like, well, this is the way I feel. Well, I know this is wrong because I personally went through it. I'm like, yes, but you are an exception. Like you're not the rule. Like you're not, you're not the generalized majority. Like what happened to you doesn't mean that it's happening everywhere. And you should be suing those people if that's what happened to you. Like I'm not saying ignore it, you know? And so he yeah. posted like a video, uh, like a video short basic of him um, explaining why the inflation in gas, why nationwide inflation and, in, in, you know, record highs, was Biden's fault. And shortly after, he got permanently deleted from Twitter. Prior to that, he never had any problems. And he's actually never had a strike before. He's never had a warning before. They just straight up permanently banned him. I'm curious what reason. I'm curious what reason they gave, like false whatever. I mean, they're, they're... He, he said he ha he said he hasn't received anything. He said he doesn't even oh know like God. what tweet did it. Yeah. He's they're, like, I wish I could explain it. They're very threatened. And if, and if more people... You know, I mean, I guess it's our tias and our moms and stuff that watch Univision, right? But, like, if more people saw, like, no, eso no está bien. You know what I mean? Like, if they realize, like, right. well, why is it that big tech is putting their thumb on the scale? And, like, why are they so threatened over discourse? And you're absolutely right, man. Right. Like, what happens a lot of times when you try to debate or, or have these discussions with people on the left is that it's one of these, like, uh, respect my truth. What is it? Like, honor my personal what what's the word they use um uh lived John, truth something like that. something like that my lived experience yeah. and my lived yeah. truth it's like it goes back right. to it goes back to just rhetoric and just like hogwash just like random words and like nothing fucking factual and speaking of colombia right speaking of colombia and este colombiano and and the amount of marxism that he experienced at, at the university right when when uh, Colombia was having these uprisings, like they're killing us, our government is killing us. It kind of looked like a color revolution from afar, right? I'm not an expert on that, but I will be. Right. <laughs> Let me watch a couple documentaries. <laughs> Let me watch a couple documentaries and I will be. Um, but if you watch the Jay Balvin documentary, how he was like staying out of it. And there's scenes where, 
where he's there with his friends and they're like, oh yeah, you know, they want you que opines or whatever. And he's like, no, no puedo decir nada, whatever, right? It's almost like Jay, right. Jay Balvin gets it. Something tells me like this motherfucker stayed out of it because he understood like the media is making it seem one way, but there's a lot more to it. And a lot of these people that are like tearing up burning stuff it's very antifa like mm -hmm. and you see these mass movements happen and they get employed and they get um you know these marxist anti you know like we have here these anti-american uh, uh fucking activists so something mm -hmm. tells me that jay balvin saw what was going on in colombia i was like i'm gonna stay out of this because if i try to <laughs> if i try to opine on it people aren't gonna really get where i'm coming from and it's damned if you do damned if you don't and sometimes a lot of times celebrities choose to stay out of it so this gentleman mm -hmm. we're talking about his name is frank what now what was the guy's name um frank amargo frank? Um, he has a, he has a pretty lengthy lengthy name but uh yeah it's like um let me see if i can just quickly while you're looking that up uh, <clears throat> Anthony, uh, do you have 10 more minutes i know it's monday morning and it's you know we just changed no, the time spring break yeah do you have 10 more minutes <laughs> Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Okay, uh, cool. uh, so his name is Franklin Andres Camargo Armas. So that that's what his name is, Franklin. And yeah, I see the Colombian flag now, so I did get it right. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, he's a Spanish speaker, immigrant. He's here, I, I think, like on like, a like, permitted visa or something like that. Uh, but going back to the Colombia, like I remember who you were talking about, I actually made it a point to kind of reach out to some of the people that were protesting out in Colombia because I also wanted to kind of get a sense. So I used kind of like my networks to like interview basically three college students, uh, males that were out there protesting and they were kind of like acting as like independent journalists. And so I reached out to them like, hey, like you guys are out there like every day. So like what's really going on? And they're like, oh, they're killing us out here. And oh, this is this not. And, and it's just because, you know, because we want to like use pronouns and this is not. I'm like, wait, like what? And, and like, they were just like, yeah, you know, like we're, we're trans activists and we're this or that. And I'm like, oh, you guys are lefties. <laughs> and I'm like, well, let, let's try to stay objective here, guys. Like, don't, don't just say that the police is targeting you because of your pronouns, because there's no real way for me to find that out. Right. Like I can't, I can't objectively say like, Hey, this is real. This is not, obviously you can tell me your side of things, but like, let's just try to stay as objective because you guys are saying that you're media. So just act as media, like don't act like as political activists. Like I, I kind of invited you guys on as media. And this is where, again, I go into like, I need you guys to tell me objectively, why is it that you guys are right? Or why, why is it that what's happening is wrong? And they couldn't, they just couldn't tell me. Everything was subjective. Everything was like, well, we've been suffering. We've been persecuted. We've been this, we this, I this, I this. I'm like, okay, but like on the grand scale, like what is really happening? Like, uh, can you give me like statistics? And like, why does statistics matter? Why does statistics matter? Like if it's, ha if, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where like, if there's no, if, if there's no freedom for me, there's no freedom anywhere. And like, well, that's not necessarily true. You know what I mean? Like that just means that you just have a really bad experience or that something is happening to you. You are being personally persecuted. We need to find out why and hold those people accountable. But that's just like, why are you asking us statistics? And they're like, where are you? Some kind of conservative? And I'm like, did they not tell you? Does my bio not say that I am a conservative? Like, yes, I am, but I'm also a journalist. And they're like, oh, no wonder. You know, like you guys in America, like you guys have your own problems and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, but I'm trying to inform my, like, my audience of what's happening because I have a lot of Colombians that are following me that live in the United States. And I'm telling you, man, every time I bring these people on, it's not like that. It's not, I don't say it out of hate. I'm not saying that there aren't intellectuals on the left. I'm just saying every time I bring these people in, it's always me, 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 my personal experience. And this is why America is the KKK. And I'm like, well, no, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but it's just not, man. Your personal lived experience, your personal trauma, you experiencing one form of racism at a bank someday because they didn't take you in quick enough, but they took in the white person quick. That's not, yeah. that's not systemic racism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you can't explain it to me. And, and that's why it's unfortunate, man. But a lot of us on the right don't have, mm -hmm. we can't get these lefties on because it's like, they, they always feel like, I, I remember when Matt, I don't know if you guys know Matt Walsh from the, from the daily wire, yeah. Oh, yeah. but he, he recently, he went on um, Dr. Phil, yeah, right? And he was, it was him by himself 
And he was debating like three, I think it was like a panel of like three to five people of like the transgender community. How like, oh, if uh, like, you know, trans men are real men and trans women are real women. And it was him by himself. I mean, he, he's pretty outnumbered. And I mean, this guy was speaking facts and facts and facts and facts. And all the other people were doing was like, well, this is my personal lived experience. You could never understand. And he's like, fair, but also you can never understand me. Do you see how that works? And then afterward, like all these activists went on Twitter and said, oh my gosh, like I have PTSD. Like I, I cannot sleep at night. Like I just hear his words late at night and they wake me up with sweat. And I'm just like, you lost your argument. And now you're going to Twitter to rant about how you have PTSD to gain that sympathy support because you couldn't execute your conversation your reasons for believing things well enough, eloquently enough, and provide it with facts that now you're just wanting the sympathy of people because everyone's making fun of you. And it's not because you're trans. It's because you're, again, um, you're basically reinforcing that there is no argument to be had. It's just your emotion. And the thing is, that's fine. Hey, feel emotional. You want to be trans? Be trans. Okay, that's on you. But the thing is, is that you demand it of society. You demand that we use mm -hmm. your pronouns. And that's what Mass Ross was saying. He's like, look, man, I would have no problem with anyone. But the thing is, now you're bringing it into academia. Now you're protesting, like, why can't three-year-olds mm -hmm. be transitioned over to the other gender? Come on now. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's just a bunch of rhetoric, man. And a lot of times, <clears throat> these types of movements, they tend to attract people who just feel disenfranchised, you know what I mean? Or, ha <clears throat> you right. know, or a lot of times too, like for example, uh, my 13 year old daughter and my wife, they were discussing like, Oh, did y'all see Kim K that she's been going viral because she said, work harder ladies and work harder and work harder. And people, <laughs> and people got triggered cause they're like, bitch, you know what I mean? You got all these assistants and you don't even do nothing but take pictures all day or whatever. Right. And mm -hmm. I made sure to tell my daughter, I said, I said, as we're having this discussion, I said, we have to be weary that we don't get assigned this opinion of like um basically being resentful or or, or mad at successful people because there's a right. lot that that's a part of it like anybody who feels like well i'm other i'm not white i'm not straight white male or whatever right so mm -hmm. you have so you have these uh, trans kids who basically they they become um they get weaponized and they become activists. You know what I mean? They become just triggered for everything because, or even like right. minorities, minorities where it's like, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not white. I'm not this or whatever. So they feel insecure and inferior on their own because of whatever lived experience they had. But now they get recruited into these mass movements of America bad, systemic oppression, critical race theory, and anything white, anything on the right, anything Republican is bad. You know, and then even like the, yeah. the the Florida thing where it's like, oh, don't say gay, don't say gay. And it's like, that's not how the did that take off, man? The left, they just good at rewording <clears throat> stuff. They're, exactly, man. The left is so, so good, man. They're really good when it comes to wording. And um, they, I mean, they, they because they control academia, because they control mainstream media, because they control social media. The moment one person says, don't say gay, it's like, that's what we're using for our marketing. Echo. We're going to use that as a marketing. And I'm, and I'm telling you, it was so interesting because literally nowhere in the bill does it say, don't say gay. Like nowhere. There's actually a lot of Republicans that are upset that it doesn't go far enough. Further, yeah. Like, yeah. And it's like, dude, this is not what the, you know, what the left is saying it does. Like at all. At all. This is just transparency for parents, which, hey, that's the way it should be, right? If, if you're two-year-old, your three-year-old, your four-year-old is, you know, talking about pronouns and this and that, like the parents should be aware um, because what, what ends up happening is you have schools here in California that are having these conversations that are, you know, changing kids' pronouns only in school but protecting the students from the parents. But it's like they're never having the conversation with the parents to begin with, so how do you know they need to be protected from the parents at all? So, like, you know, you, you can debate on what side you're in, whether – Oh, the parents should be notified or the parents should not be notified. You know, how can you tell us we can turn a part of the community, et cetera, et cetera. But the moment they said, don't say gay, I'm like, I know this is going to take off. Sure enough, it was trending on Twitter, don't say gay. And then I saw, you know, TikTok influencers like saying, you know, how dare you? Yeah. How dare a uh, don't say gay yeah, bill? Are speech. you serious? Yeah. yeah and, and I'm just like, this guy fell for it. 
this guy mm-hmm. with yeah. you know Trigger, almost yeah. a million followers on TikTok, he fell for it. He actually genuinely believed that that's what the bill was called. <laughs> Don't say gay bill. And when and when you had reporters asking, even when you had reporters, man, this is what this is what upsets me the most. When you have journalists and reporters talking to Ron DeSantis saying like, what do you think about the controversial don't say gay bill? What did Ron DeSantis say? What, where did you get that name? Why, why are you saying don't say gay? He's like, well, that's just what people are calling it. I'm like, but you're a journalist though, man. Why don't you call it what it is? You know, like Florida bill A776 or whatever it is, you know? Why, why, are, you call, why are you further validating this nonsense? You know, and, and it's, sad that even journalists join in why because it's clicks because it's views because it's sound bites because they're allies to a movement whatever it was but like dude that's not your job as a journalist to determine like you call it what it is and you ask the questions anyway you say hey this florida bill a776 that is falsely being called don't say gay can you clarify on that or what is your position on that or what do you hope to achieve will it escalate that's a valid question you know, but when you start labeling it the wrong way, you're already calling it the wrong bill. I mean, dude, it, it, it's it's insane. And then what? And then what do you have? You have Democrats jumping on Twitter. You know, like, oh, uh, don't retweet this because this is what the, what the right hates. You know, gay. You know, and everyone's like retweeting it, like, oh, gay, 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 yeah, gay. I'm like, dude, no, like, no one, no one at all, like, cares. I promise you. You know what I mean? Like, I I haven't heard a single person of authority on the right saying like oh this is what we must do to silence the gays like no one has ever said that <laughs> well, yeah. but that's just the way they're jumping on it because they jump on these trends because uh, they know that it appeals to people's emotions uh jesse kelly on twitter made a good point he said why aren't the gay republicans or, or gay conservatives or gay people on the right why aren't they so uh fired up about this and, and so adamant about like making sure that the third graders and the second graders and the first graders and the teachers and the teachers and these activists, purple hair teachers got to fucking drill it into these pre-K kids about what's your identity? What's your gender? Are you sure? Don't misgender me. All that gender, 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 uh, critical queer theory, all this stuff. He says, why aren't they so head over heels about this? He said, because the love, it's not even about the gay part. He said, it's about rebuilding a broken child how you want to rebuild them after you break them that's how he right. that that was the point he was trying yeah. to make. you're you're gonna say something yeah no anthony i was gonna say uh you've been on the show before listeners might not know just real quick we should have done this at the beginning but what's your background so for listeners that haven't heard you before uh, kind of get an insight of what you used to do and kind of what you do now yeah so i'm in los angeles california i was born and raised here um until i was basically like 18 and then i joined the military at the time i joined the u.s coast guard for over a decade i was never really involved politically i just didn't care for politics my mom you know immigrant from mexico she'd be like oh this is some cosas de gringos you know when it when when anything related to politics (laughs) which again it just kind of goes into that uh, unfortunate generalization where like a lot of Hispanics just don't get involved politically, especially I think like Christian uh, um, um, uh, Hispanics, we just don't get involved. My pastor never talked about uh, politics. I know a lot of churches that are Spanish speaking that just don't talk at all about politics or current events. They're just like, no, no, like we just worship God and, and that's it. But I'm like, oh man, you're doing a disservice to your people and to your congregation. Um, but with that, <clears throat> I left the Coast Guard back in 2017 Obviously, 2016 was a major election year, um, and so I got out, and uh, when I got back to Los Angeles, and I started going to school, um, uh, I was majoring in nursing at the time, um, so I was taking my pre-wax, and I noticed just how, how, how hyper-political like, everything just became after Trump won in 2016. Like Everything was political. Everything was racist. Every single soundbite that Univision was able to take out of context, you know, oh, look, he's racist. He hates us. You know, then you have Jorge Ramos, like, oh, look, he hates Mexicans. He hates everyone. And so I was just like, I I just feel like I'm being lied to. And now that I have the time, now that I'm out of the military, I can really sit down and see, like, what policies and this. And I think that another reason why I didn't really care for politics was just because I, I moved so much that even if I voted, like, locally, I wouldn't live there long enough you know, to, to really make a change. Cause I'm like, well, I'm out of here like in two or three years, you know, so who cares about voting? But anyways, 2017, I got really politically active. I created like an online uh, profile for myself. I went by the conservative Latino for a couple of years um, just because I figured out like who, how I identified politically. I wasn't sold on the Republican party. 
I definitely was not told at all with the Democratic Party, especially being in California and knowing who runs the entire state and just taking a look at the current state. I was like, well, I don't want to continue to vote for the problem, you know, so I kind of want to create change. And then I, I just kind of jumped more into like information, political information. I started finding out that like both sides had been lying. I, I was never a big fan of the Bush family. I was never a big fan of like Bill O'Reilly or like a lot of like the right leaning people up until Trump really. And, and I, that's what really kind of like catered to me was his anti-establishment, his, his anti-corporate media. Cause I was just like, yeah, man, like these guys are definitely lying to us. Yeah. And so <clears throat> yeah. um, I got politically active back then. And I uh, just kind of became like an independent journalist. And then now I'm a paid journalist with El American where I, I, I'm kind of like helping build like a, a parallel of news where it, it's not just leftist talking points or liberal talking points, but we do have like a conser- like a big conservative um, uh, employees, uh, libertarians, independent. I'm a registered independent myself now um, because I just like to be fair and balanced and I like to call out both sides as much as I can. Cool, man. I just had to ask that real quick before I turn it over to Chingo because uh, somebody had posted an old video that you did with, uh, what's James's last name? Is it Klug? Klug? Yeah, James Klug, yeah. James Klug, uh, about you talking to people on the street about the border. And do you remember that clip? It's probably from a year ago. Yeah, I, 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 I've done a couple of them, actually. Um, uh, not just with James Klug, but I also did like a segment with Univision, and it basically had me debate uh, communists from San Diego. She was a college student. Where can, where can fans like- uh, find those clips? Do you know? Um, if you go to like, just like uh, YouTube and you just type in like Univision plus Anthony Cabasa, I'm sure you can probably just like pull it up. Okay. Um, I, I should probably like start looking at finding all those clips. Yeah, so I can just sure. send it to people. But, but working U.S. Coast Guard myself, which is under the Department of Homeland Security, and then I myself worked the borders as a Spanish interpreter, um, I firsthand got to see why it is that this nation needs strong border security. Um, it's not just about the deporting, you know, people are like, oh, you know, like you're a race trader to your own people, like deporting your own people. And I'm like, nah, man, <laughs> like that's, that's just what they sell you. That's what they want you to believe that because I'm Hispanic, I shouldn't be helping deport quote unquote our people. But let me tell you, man, it's not even mostly Hispanics that are coming through like our borders. You know, there's a lot more foreign nationals, bad actors, um, terrorists, you know, that are coming through. Um, we got obviously working for the Coast Guard. I got to see like the real report on people and like how they're rapists and how, how they've committed homicide and how they're basically fleeing their country because they're being persecuted because they're they're basically bad people. Um, but <clears throat> that, again, that's something that even Cesar Chavez was against was illegal immigration. And it wasn't because he hated brown people or because he hated his own people. It's because he understood how the system worked, where you had these corporations that were basically exploiting uh, illegal immigrants, regardless of where they come. I mean, you guys follow Jorge Ventura and his first documentary basically showed how there's Chinese immigrants, how there's Russian immigrants, how there's, um, you know, Armenian immigrants that are being sold here for illegal slavery, basically, um, to be exploited by corporations. And, you know, there's agricultural corporations that are hiring people, paying them under the table, forcing them to live within the ranch uh, to maximize profit. I mean, it's a whole system, man, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not being talked about enough. And I think that what George is doing is good in, in kind of highlighting that. And where is it happening? Right here in California, the most progressive state, you know, and you would think that this would never happen here. Oh, but how can Democrats allow, you know, like uh, our people to be exploited by the cartel and the Russian mob and the Chinese, you know, uh, Yakuza or whatever they're called, you know, um, it's, it's interesting, man. And, and again, no one's really talking about that. And so when, you talk to people on that angle of, look, I am against illegal immigration because of these things, because women are raped, because girls are sold into sex trafficking, because boys are killed, uh, they're exploited, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then they just turn around and like, hmm, like, well, I don't like it anyway. And I'm like, well, that, but it, I destroyed your false narrative that it's a racist thing to be against illegal immigration. Yep. Dr- drives down wages and things like that. And um, I feel like a lot of uh, Raza are not aware of um, Cesar Chavez's stance on all of this, you know, and I, I, on our at what did he said page, our political Instagram page, we should we should highlight that and post something about Cesar Chavez to almost like reclaim him and and reeducate people as to what 
what he really was about in, in a lot of ways in terms of like trying to help the actual farm laborers and their rights and the union and wages and, and also seeing the exploitation side because it's ironic that the Democrats love having a bust of Cesar Chavez, uh, the little statue, right, in the White House, and they make sure it's always in plain yeah, sight exactly. so, that the, so that the Latinos and the, the uh, America Ferreras and the Cristelas and the Eva Longorias of the world could feel good on what they're pushing to their people, right? All the right. fools, all the fools out there. Like, we definitely have to, like, reclaim Cesar Chavez and let people know if you're, if you're anti, you know, border security or national security or if you're anti any of that, Stop claiming Cesar Chavez. Like I'm gonna have to find a bunch of those old clips, Anthony. And, and since this episode's coming out this week on Wednesday, I'm gonna just bloat our "What did he said?" feed with a bunch of those old clips of you debating these communists and these other people just from regular California that you know don't really know what's up. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting is um, I, I was just recently talking to uh, another journalist, another Latino, believe it or not, um, Juan Moreno from the Daily Caller. He works alongside with uh, Jorge Ventura. And what he's been finding out about the Yuma, the Yuma, Arizona, like I'm sure you guys know that there's been like a, a certain uh, location where the ball, the wall basically stopped being built. And that's where a lot of these people are being trafficked through. But what a lot of people don't understand, and this is where, again, it gets very, very political. And this is where like, you know, people get very sensitive because of the names that are dropped and the, and the people that are involved. But basically, you have an Indian reservation that they said, hell no, we're not building wall. And I remember that the Democrats were attacking Trump so, so much because he wanted to get walls, uh, part of, you know, his, his border wall uh, built on top of Indian reservation. So people went back like, oh, this is part of colonization. This is part of white supremacy. But what they don't understand, and again, Juan Moreno exposes all of this, um, is that that Indian reservation is taken in money by the cartel to smuggle drugs and, and humans. Now, am I saying that everyone in that Indian reservation is aware of it? Absolutely not. Just like everything else, it's usually leadership taking in the money, right? But then what you have is these Democrats working hand in hand with the corrupt, the, the corrupt Democrats that are there locally, working hand in hand with the corrupt leadership of that uh, Indian reservation that they know. I mean, you, you can go down there and you can talk to the Border Patrol yourself and they say, yes, we are fully aware that this Indian reservation is taken in money by the cartel to smuggle drugs and people through them. So what we have to do is we usually have to patrol the outskirts of the Indian reservation and make the, and make the arrest of the illegals there. Why is no one talking about this? Why is no one talking about, well, why? Because it's racist. Because how dare you accuse an Indian reservation? These people have gone through enough. They've gone through colonization. How dare you accuse? Well, that's exactly what they expect of naive people. That's exactly what they want. They demand you be loyal and be blind to any atrocity coming from anyone except white people. And that's how they're able to get away with it. And every two years, Democrats campaign. Oh, Donald Trump, the racists try to build a border wall here. Well, if you find out why, you'll know why. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. of course, it goes into this spot where, oh, we don't really talk about that. Oh, no, no, that, that, that'd be a really bad headline. Indian Reservation making millions a year from cartel to, 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 to transport drugs. That's just a really bad headline, man. That we we don't want to do that. We don't want to anger, you know. That that would drive voters away, man. Like we don't want to do that. And I'm like, so you'd rather suppress the truth than 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 that, you know, than actually solve a problem. There's also those and like this, uh -huh, go happens ahead. everywhere, man. Yeah, there's also those. Uh, I've heard those like uh, butterfly sanctuary or like these uh, all other pieces of land where it's like this is a nature conservation and you cannot build a wall. Or you can't have La Migra over here, right? And it's like. Right. You're exasperating the issue. So now the cartels are like, we're going to go right through that tall ass grass where y'all ain't came through here and cleaned the shit up. And then you got like these third party NGOs. They're all in cahoots and the Catholic charities. And I mean, it's just a big old fucking scam. And the American people, we're the ones getting hurt, you know, on top of the, the people that are getting trafficked and right. everything else. So very unfortunate. Uh, a lot of propaganda, a lot of rhetoric. Everybody listening, keep your head on a swivel. Make sure you're following Anthony, Informed with Anthony online. We're going to post up some of your old clips on our uh, What Did He Said page as well. Yeah, buddy. Before we let you go, is there anything that people should keep an eye out that you're working on with El American or anything else? Well, I just got back from the People's Convoy, so we're still continuing to obviously cover on that. We're, we're trying to kind of 
filtered through the Ukraine Russia stuff, but I'm sure even you guys are looking at some headlines. I'm like, hmm, mm. it sounds it sounds kind of bogus, you know. <laughs> hmm. uh, so we're trying we're trying to do our best there to filter there, but um, I most likely will be headed back to the border because I do when when I spoke to uh, Juan about that specific segment um, is it, I, I found it very interesting. So I kind of want to go investigate really what's happening at the human sector. But he did tell me um, <clears throat> uh, that. He was basically threatened by the cartel, and that's why he had to move away. Because that's just the way the cartel operate, man. They see they see anyone getting too close for comfort, and they'll threaten you. You know, they'll they'll literally find out where you drive, what where you live. They'll find out what you drive. They'll call your cell phone and tell you, "We know who you are. We know that you've been here reporting. You either leave or we kill you." That's just the way it is, you know. And um, so it's sometimes it's rough, man. I mean, you got Jorge Ventura, you know, that uh, uncovering all this stuff. Uh, all throughout Cali of these illegal grows by cartel that are using illegal immigrants uh, that the Democrats are uh, happily, you know, providing them by, by not putting up um, safety measures and, and secure border and, you know, making sure that legal immigration is, is, is very, very limited or cut down. Um, and so when you start poking around, you know, and you start finding this out, uh, unfortunately you get, you get threatened with your life. And that's why in Mexico they have so many journalists that are just killed you know, monthly, basically, because they're exposing. But um, for now, I, I think I'm going to go to the Yuma sector and, and just kind of try to see what I can put together and, and continue coverage with what's happening at the border because they're still happening. Hey, real quick, you have know? you ever gotten together with uh, Chief Roy Villarreal? Are Chief, you, are uh, you familiar with who that is? I have not. Dude, we got to put you in touch then if you're going to go there because we've had him on two or three times now. And he he's a 30 year uh, retired uh, border chief who's been on the podcast with us. And and he's, you know, still doing some work in that uh, world. But, you know, on the low low, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, I'll put you guys in touch, man. He's a very interesting guy. And he knows the ins and outs of that because he worked in Yuma and all of all of that area for, you know, 20, between 20 and 30 years. Great resource. Great resource. So between we've got some Avengers, dude, between Jorge Ventura, we got Anthony, Oscar Blue and Chief Roy. All the information is kind of on RPT, if you think about it. Fuck Marvel. Fuck yeah. And, and I, <laughs> no, and I, and I think that that's good, though, because, you, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that the left has been really good at is that they, they basically sold to Hispanics that no one's allowed to speak for you unless they look like you, unless they speak like you. So uh, one of the cool things is that because we're all Latinos, it's kind of like, well, what are you going to, what are going to use against us now? We're literally Latinos, somos hijos de migrantes, hablamos español. Like, what else do you want from us? So, you know, like what, what lie are you going to tell to our people now of why they shouldn't listen, you white liberal? You know, so, so if people don't want to listen, I mean, that's, that's really up to them. But I mean, I, you know, I, I, it is important to have, you know, people represent us and people that look like us and stuff like that. I, I don't think that it should be to the levels that the left has, has done it. Um, but I mean, like you said, you got Oscar the Blue that's doing the work. You got myself, you got Juan, you got Julio Rosas that has been down there too, another Latino, um, you know, that worked. And like, dude, we're just, we're just giving you the truth. Like, we're not telling you pick a side. We're just telling you, like, dude, help change this. You hey, know? when so, are you planning on going to Yuma? Just out of curiosity. Um, it, it, I, I don't have a specific date yet because, um, from what Juana was telling me is it's, it's pretty dangerous right now. And so what I might have to do is I might have to like, kind of like show up and, and, and do what I want to do and then not post anything until I'm back home. Well, you know I'll, after, saying? after this, I'll send you the info to connect with chief Roy and y'all can uh, see what y'all can do together. Okay. That sounds good. Michelle, man, Absolutely. thank you very much. Keep up the great work and uh, we got your back 1000%. Thanks for your time, brother. All right. Thank you guys so much for having me. Take care. Bye. Peace. Bye.